Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, heroes and villains. I'm your host, Deshaun Fauntleroy. I know your time is precious, so we're going to get right into today's show. In today's show, I have a special guest coming on. Her name is Michelle Beatty. She's a career podcaster, career confidence coach, and the author of Confidently You, a 21-day action plan to your professional best. Through her book and coaching, she helps professionals face fears, break through mental barriers, and realize the possibilities that exist in their careers. She enjoys seeing people succeed and has coached over 700 plus professionals in national and international markets on how to accomplish their goals and land their desired professional role. Michelle has also executed training and development programs. She is also the host of a podcast, Career Tipper. Without further ado, I want to welcome Michelle Beatty to the Sports Mastery Podcast. Michelle, tell us what you're up to these days. So lately I'm up to currently just focusing on making sure that the podcast is a diverse range of professionals, seasoned professionals in their industry. I want to make sure that the podcast landscape covers every possible industry um, and just different professionals sharing their story on how they became their professional best, sharing professional development tips and their keys to being successful in business and career. You know, when I was doing my research on you and actually just coming across you uh, online, I really felt that you would be a great fit for the Sports Mastery Podcast because my audience is comprised of student athletes, sports parents. Some of those parents are entrepreneurs or they're, they're, they're executives of their corporations or they have their own, you know, business or startups. So, you know, learning about you and seeing some of the things that were in your bio, I felt that you would be a great fit. You know, one of the things that, you know, I work with a handful of student athletes in my sports mastery program, and sometimes they might show up to a meeting, you know, and not have the reading, the assigned reading that we had done, not had the assigned questions or essay written that we were uh, preparing to discuss on that particular day. And it usually comes down to them managing their time. And I know part of your program is based around, you know, managing time. What would you say to the student athlete or the sports parent to help their student athlete on how to master or manage their time? Well, I think it's key that it's important for everyone to remember that you are, when you're a student athlete or just a student period, you are learning how to prioritize your goals. Like that's like first and foremost. And you're also de defining your work ethic. It doesn't just go away. Like you have to practice. You have to practice being excellent. You have to practice being on time, getting up, making sure you're properly nourished and ready and presented and prepared for that day. So you got to prioritize according to your goals. And also keep in mind that you're um, developing your what your work ethic is going to be moving forward. So a couple of key things to remember is like focus on your big ticket items first, whatever that could be, making sure that you're prepared, making sure your assignments are done before the night before. So however your night is, if you come in from practice, make sure that you eat, at, you know, you eat, you factor in your study time. But instead of maybe that social time, maybe you need to spend more time, you know, preparing for the next day and then maybe double up on your social time at a different time, whatever that could be for you. And also, um, Factor in, create your deadlines that are realistic. Don't be overzealous. Know what you can do and maybe just work on time blocks or um, make sure that when you do your schedules and you figure out your timelines, you're working two weeks ahead or one week ahead to make so you can have extra time when you need it. So you're not overwhelmed um, when you're when it's time to show up and answer for the test, for the session with your coach, whatever it can be. And you just want to be consistent. Another thing between the parent and the um, the parent and the athlete is your accountability partners to each other. You know, accountability beyond the parent child dynamic, but it's also accountability. Um, you're showing up, and you know, make it big picture. What could that be? Together, we're working on what our family legacy is. Together, um, by us showing up, we're developing you to be successful in life. And just connect the dots from a big big picture and also a future standpoint that what you do now is really cultivating who you choose to be in your future. Average student athlete, they're probably in class six to seven hours a day. Then they might have practice. 
then there's strength training, then there's maybe study hall. And then after study hall, they have another assignment or more homework to do. Then they're probably going to get back up again at five or six o'clock in the morning and have a morning workout, depending on what season or what part of the season they're in, whether it's preseason, in season or off season. And when you're looking at a four year cycle, whether that be high school or whether that be college, you know, oftentimes you can get lost along the way or you can lose what's called your your mojo, you know, and in, you know, today's where we have grit, you know, <laughs> keeping 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 grit along the journey, because sometimes it gets tough. You know, you, you feel like you don't have time to have a social life. You feel like you don't have time to just have fun with your family and friends, or you feel like you just hit a roadblock in your game or in your academics. What, what would you say to the student athlete that's listening, Michelle, on like how to keep grit along the journey as far as dealing with maybe minor frustrations and setbacks? I love it. Um, One thing for sure, grit is the essence of your work ethic and nothing happens overnight. So you're going to have your highs and your lows and in your, during your journey, we know what you're saying, like being committed to the schedule, being committed to the practice, the physical endurance, the mental endurance that you're building along that way. And one thing to really focus on during that time of mastering a skill and things of that nature is be consistent with facing your fears, um, whatever that could be. For, oftentimes it could be mental. So challenging your truth, um, learning something new. And then also what's a great compliment to that is self-talk. Like I am a great athlete. That's a simple statement, but I am a, uh, I'm a sought after soccer player. I am a phenomenal weightlifter, like reinforcing that during your hard times to keep, to give you that second wind, so to say. And when I speak of facing your fears, a lot of things can creep into your mind when you're into your routine of practice, practicing to be the best you possible. So sometimes you might want to find a way to break that up, whatever that could be in the midst of your morning or evening or day and try something new, challenge your truth, um, seek forgiveness, um, change the way you see yourself. And that goes back to what I mentioned just a minute ago, what is your big picture? Because that's something that a lot of people, sometimes that's the last lesson they get in what it means to be successful is the journey of the big picture. And that doesn't happen overnight that takes time. And so it's like when you hit that bump in the road or you're exhausted or you're frustrated or you're overwhelmed, it's like, okay, I'm one step closer to being my definition of excellent. I'm one step closer to experience success that I am working to achieve because you never know how this journey is going to go. Um, if you're injured or if you do get signed or you do launch an amazing coaching program, whatever that is, you have to decide that you're going to hold fast to accomplishing that. Now, one thing that really comes to mind too, and I know like when people hear grit, sometimes they think of the author of The Power, the author of Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance by Dr. Angela Lee Duckworth. And yes. she also did a, um, you know, a TED Talk. And during that TED Talk, she shared that study show that it's grit, not intelligence, that is the major predator of success. Intelligence and talents are unarguably favorable assets. Anyone can be successful if they work hard and apply tenacious, dogged perseverance toward their goal. So I think that is something that one thing that people can keep in mind and students can keep in mind. But then another another example that comes to mind is um, Navy SEALs, um, doctor, no, excuse me, not doctor, Admiral William H. McRaven, commander of the United States Spatial Operations Command, he does a lot of, he spent a season doing different graduation speeches. And during that, during those um, ceremonies, he would share what one key thing that he felt was essential for Navy SEALs when they start their basic training. And that was being committed to making their bed every day, making their bed every day and taking pride in the simple act 
of starting your day with an accomplished task, which gave you the confirmation and the affirmation that if you can make your bed well, then you can go out and do the next task well, and then you can move forward and do the next task well. And those are just little things. It's practice, it's mindset, and it's confidence in yourself. Confidence that you will be who you are grooming yourself to be, and you are going to accomplish your goal in the end. You know what? I, I like that because <laughs> I have to make my bed every day and I have to leave the house with the kit with the kitchen clean. You know, yes, the dishes I'm have the to be way. washed and dry. <laughs> they have to be put up. It, it's just a pet peeve. It, it doesn't matter if I'm rushing or, or borderline running late. They, it's just something that has to be done. You know, I, I, I really appreciate about you about what you discussed uh about grit because I tell students, my student athletes, that the the objective of sports, if you're, you know, aiming to play at a high level is just to get your education paid for and to stay in school for as long as possible because the workforce is waiting for you. And what I mean by that is I want you to go get an undergrad degree and then let's pursue a master's. And then if you're really loving school, maybe you'll become a doctor or go after your PhD. You know, and then along the way, you might discover something along the lines of being an entrepreneur or starting your own business or connecting with some people, you know, within the group to start something on a bigger level. But that I, I can appreciate that about grit, you know, and, and keeping to the journey because the journey, the journey is always about education. And, you know, though, what was what was the name of I've heard of grit and Angela Duckworth. I might I have hundreds of books around here and I'm, I'm sure it's sitting here somewhere. But could you tell the audience where to find that book at? And then tell us about your book, Michelle. Oh, sure. Well, Dr. Angela Lee Duckworth, her book, I believe it's on Audible, but you can find it on Amazon, all the major um, book retailers. It's called Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. And my book is called Confidently You, 21 Day Action Plan to Your Professional Best, and it can be found on Amazon. And my book was created during my time as um, Director of Career Services and Higher Education. One thing that I realized when I was working with the students, a lot of them were qualified or overqualified for the opportunities that they wanted to pursue and the ones that they were applying for. And oftentimes, it was their lack of confidence that made them not go for an opportunity. Something someone told them when they were young, like they weren't good at math, but yet they are like knocking it out the park in statistics. I'm like, you are good at math. Um, but just little things like that, that sometimes you are not connecting to the dots, that those are distractors for you, that those are the deal breakers that is, disconnecting you from moving forward. Now, no, I understand that that does not apply to everyone. Some people are confident, they're, they're out, they have, they're a mission, they have a plan and they're going to make it happen. But there are some people, they keep creating, they have created a repetitive cycle that they want to break, but haven't made the connection of what they need to break in order to move forward and to propel into their next level of professional best. So I wrote the book specifically about different steps. It's actually 30 days because it has a bonus week. Um, and it's, it breaks down. It's very simplistic. And I wrote it intentionally to be simplistic because I wanted the readers that need the book to be able to identify what their vision is for themselves, what paths are they taking, and just reveal aha moments to them to connect the dots and also build their confidence every day along the way and very practical at the same time, a creative manner. You know, you said something that re that reminded me of certain parents, certain coaches, mentors, or other leaders that might work with young people. And what that reminded me of is that we always have to be aware of how we are speaking to young people or, 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 or understanding, you know, an environment that, a, that an individual might come from. Because oftentimes, especially in the sports world, you could talk to a kid a certain way by raising your voice. There might be profanity being used, but it might be that that's not what motivates that individual. What might really motivate a person is just us going to talk to them, you know, with 
having a level head and letting them know what we want versus what they might have done. And because I've, I've seen coaches, they yell, shout, scream at players, and then it puts the player into a further slump. And they might, they might not have really meant that you're no good at doing this, but if that student doesn't understand that and then they take that serious, then I can see what you're talking about where they develop like those mental roadblocks, maybe five, 10 or several years later to overcome. So I think that's key, you know, what you said concerning grit and really about your book. Now, you know, you wrote the book, Tell, talk to me about entrepreneurship for young people, because I'm a big proponent of that. I want you to go to school, but I want you to think of ways, you know, to be self-sufficient. You know, what would you say to the young person? I don't care if they're starting a lemonade stand as their first entrepreneur venture. What would you say to that individual, Michelle? And we are living in a time where multiple streams of income is just a necessity. It's no longer an option. Um, whether and some people, they have one income and they're okay and, and that works. But if you experience a layoff, if your, your family dynamics change and you are depending upon two incomes in your house, that could be a game changer in a lot of different ways. And so I always encourage people to be prepared for the unexpected moments in life because they're going to happen. I myself went through layoffs. And it was, it was a game changer. I'm like, okay, I do not want to be in this position ever again. Now, mind you, I was someone that was always encouraging others. Yes, yeah, start the business, but I hadn't started one myself. Always reading about it, always researching it. And I felt like that was the biggest nudge. Like, okay, you're going to practice what you preach even more. And you're going to, you know, you're going to continue on with your work with career tipper. So I, I, and just the way the economy is going, just big picture from a global perspective, you definitely need to have multiple streams of income. So how does that factor to the student athlete? I feel like, one, they need to, if they're interested, one, they need to dream bigger for themselves. They need to figure out what they want for themselves 20 years from now. When they're 30, what does that mean? Beyond wanting to have a family, beyond wanting to have snazzy things, like how are you living? What type of house are you living in? What type of um, what type of hours are you working? What is your quality of life? Are you vacationing? Are you taking care of family? What are you doing? What does that mean? Um, and how are you contributing to, to not only to your own life, but what what do you want your footprint to be in the world? You got to wake up and be determined that you're going to leave an amazing mark on the world. What is that going to be? And how does that look 5, 10, 15 years from now? And then I always encourage people to work backwards. What can you do today to position yourself for that? Is it learning how to save your money so you can be an investor? You can be an angel investor or you can finance your own startup. Is it the fact that you might need to um, research business more, understand business? Should you, if you know that this is your passion, your, your sport is your passion, what does that mean? Are you going to become a coach? Are you going to write a program? Are you going to own the club? Um, are you going to like create, an, create equipment that they, the future athletes can use? Are you going to trademark different practices? Like what could that be? Um, in regards to techniques that you can maybe teach to others, you know, what, what does that mean? What does that mean for you? So it's like the sky's the limit, identify a need, operations of a club, um, what excites you? Like when you're out at games, um, you know, there are different things that you can observe. You can observe the concessions, you can observe the coaches, you can observe the vendors, um, the different people that come in and lay the asphalt if you're a track, a track, um, a, you know, if track is your sport. Like, what is that? People that come in and paint the lines. I mean, it seems like something that you might not want to pay attention to, but who's to say that you don't come up with a formula that's a better asphalt, quote unquote, for people to run on later in the future? Who's to say that you don't come up with a different type of tennis shoe or a different type of sock that could make it better for someone later be it someone um that's a an athlete someone that has been injured and is recovering all these are things that can make you have long-term 
income, make money while you sleep. The Sports Mastery Workbook was created for the student athlete and the parent to work through together. The Sports Mastery Workbook was created for the student athlete and the coach to work through together. It was created in a sense and in a way to bridge the gap in communication between these parties and build a successful relationship dynamic. To learn more, visit sportsmastery.com forward slash workbook or check out the show notes page and click on the link. And now back to the show. And you put the work in later, but it also positions you for the life that you want. These are just a couple of things that have come to mind. And then also preparing for entrepreneurship or just life beyond, just period. Develop your leadership skills. Develop your public speaking um, skills. Study other brands. Be tenacious about being an entrepreneur. Be committed to being the continual student. You're always in, You're always learning. Every lesson, I, I don't like to use failure. I like to say lesson because you're going to learn from it. And if you learn from it, then you won't have to repeat the cycle again. And if you repeat it again, then you can, rec- you can recognize that it's a trend and you can learn to not repeat it or learn, learn to master it in another way. And it's like, check, I've learned that. Check, I've learned this. So know what your expertise is so you can coin that. Whatever that is, you can coin that. And then you won't be, you won't be a burden to your own self as far as how you pursue your dreams. You can live confidently and not live in regret, not hold your, no, no, not say shoulda, coulda, woulda, and create this, this cloud of burden over you. You can just learn how to dream bigger, but you got to practice it. It's going to be uncomfortable at times, but that's okay because you're making yourself stronger smarter and more competitive on and off the field. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this, head on over to iTunes. Find me at Sports Mastery. I have Michelle Beatty on. She's the coach at Career Tipper. Her website is careertipper.com. This is an incredible, she's offering some incredible insight. This is a five-star show. Head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. You know, I really appreciate you coming on, Michelle. I wanted to go further because, you know, I, I appreciate what you said about learning how to master your time, how to keep your grit. We've discussed, you know, entrepreneurship for uh, the young, for young student athletes. What are some, along the journey, what are some ways for the young person and maybe even the sports parent who, who are supporting, you know, their kids to stay motivated. What would you say to the student athlete and also the sports parent? Because they're often a team. And when it synergizes, I've seen it work really well. You know, what would you say, what are some keys to stay motivated? First and foremost, first thing that comes to mind to me is surround yourself with goal getters. Not everyone is going to be not everyone on the team wants to be their best. Some people are there because they have to be there because their parent told them to be there. But learn to surround yourself around people that are goal getters and they want to be there. They want to perfect their skills. They want the team to succeed. They want to be a part of the vision of the team and making it manifest. Now, some it's, it's a given, but not every situation is the same. And then also be mindful of the conversation that you engage in. You know, the gossip isn't good, but make sure that your your conversations are uplifting, motivating, and they're also reinforcing, let's get it. Let's keep going to the next level. We'll try again. We can do it. Um, always aim to speak in a productive, proactive manner of, we got this. Keep your tone motivational. I'm not saying make it like to a point to where people are like, are you sincere? No, just keep it sincere, but keep it authentically motivational. And then also dismiss comparison. It doesn't help. Um, It can breed tension sometimes. So try to just learn to focus on your professional best and what that is on the field and off the field and being the best you can be because you are representing yourself. You are, it's okay. I feel to sometimes look at yourself as your own brand because you're trying to make sure that you are a strong contributor to your team. So what does that mean for you? And then I think also one form of motivation is just keep your promise to be all in at all times. And I think that can help you keep motivated because you're staying focused and your eyes on the prize. 
I like that. Michelle, where can people learn more about you? Um, you can visit my site at careertipper.com. And then I'm also on social media with Facebook and Instagram at Career Tipper and Twitter One. Oh, excuse me. In Twitter, I'm at Career Tipper One. Excuse me. And the podcast is on my podcast, Career Tipper, is on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and also Spotify. Awesome. You know, it's been great having you on. I wanted to ask you uh, one last question. Is, is there anything else that you would like to say, you know, to my audience that you may have forgotten or what would, or what's one nugget that you would leave? You know, I, I, like I said before, I have student athletes that listen to the show, sports parents, and also coaches. What is one thing that you would want to leave my audience with? Do not become impatient with the process of becoming great. Mm-hmm.